Hello, welcome to week 7 of the Heidelberg Catechism content. This week, the video will be about the Lord's Supper. But he was pierced for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities. The punishment that brought us peace was on him, and by his wounds we are healed. We all, like sheep, have gone astray. Each of us has turned to our own way. And the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. Isaiah 53, 5-6 and he took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to them, saying, This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Luke twenty two nineteen. The Book of Common Prayer contains liturgies for the entire congregation to repeat and commemorate together. Thus, in keeping with the Holy Communion's communal nature, we encourage you to pull from the BCP when reflecting on the proper attitude and prayers while partaking in communion. First, the remembrance of our transgressions is vital, not only for our reconciliation with each other and with God, but also for us to bow down, as worthless sinners, before our Lord and Savior. Almighty God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, Maker of all things, Judge of all men, we acknowledge and bewail our manifold sins and wickedness, which we from time to time most grievously have committed. The Lord's Prayer asks God to forgive us our debts as we also have forgiven our debtors. We can eat and drink judgment upon ourselves if we take communion with unrepentant sin. Commemoration of Christ's crucifixion is also integral to the Holy Communion. As he hangs on the cross, he is beaten, mocked, and scorned. His limp body hangs grotesquely, displayed on a Roman cross as he receives the punishment due to rebellious lawbreakers. His body is broken, battered, and bruised as blood flows from his body. This image is the one we must have in our minds as we approach the Lord's table. Here's where we meet with a living God who has offered himself once for all as the atonement for our sins. The cup and bread bear two realities, that his body has been broken and his blood has been poured out for our sins, and that he sacrificially feeds us, nourishing our weak and desolate souls with strength and comfort as we communally receive and partake of him who willingly laid down his life. So we humbly approach our almighty God in remembrance of his sacrificial love for us, with every intention to allow him to transform our hearts and minds to follow him in all things. Ye that do truly and earnestly repent you of your sins, and are in love and charity with your neighbors, and intend to lead a new life, following the commandments of God, and walking from henceforth in his holy ways. Draw near with faith, and take this holy sacrament to your comfort, and make your humble confession to Almighty God, meekly kneeling upon your knees. Second, we ought to celebrate the eternal life that Christ's broken body and poured out blood provides for us. And to the end that we should always remember the exceeding great love of our Master and only Savior Jesus Christ, thus dying for us, and the innumerable benefits which by his precious blood shedding he hath obtained to us. He hath instituted and ordained holy mysteries as pledges of his love, and for a continual remembrance of his death, to our great and endless comfort. Jesus Christ has been raised to walk with us. What an amazing reason to honor God's goodness and graciousness. So take and eat the body of Christ given for you. Here we meet the one who lives, dies, and lives again, so that we may walk in his ways. Turn from your ways and proclaim his death until he comes. For as often as you eat this bread and drink the cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. 1 Corinthians 11, 26. Thank you for watching. I hope you have a great week. Take care.